Hmm. Hey, everybody out there in internet land. Hmm. So today is Friday, 21st of September. And I know we're all going through a lot right now because tomorrow's the equinox and we're having the shift in seasons. And Sunday, we're supposed to have some geomagnetic storms that are impacting the Earth's uh, geomagnetic field. And Monday is the full moon in Aries. And there's this big transition that we are going through. I feel like the eclipses that we had back in July really stirred up a lot of stuff and cleared a lot of stuff from the body of our lives. And now it's like, then there's, there was a lunar cycle, cycle of the moon in between. And now we're in a phase where it's like, we're wrapping up the season. We're preparing to shift from um, the light time of year and move into the dark time of year, which in, um, uh, pagan traditions is, is connected to the goddess time of year and the days are going to be getting shorter and the nights are going to be getting longer but right now we're in a time of equal day and equal night so I feel that with the seasonal shifts we're being called back into into a harmonic balance with our life and with our uh, with the life force energy that flows through our bodies and I'm going to be providing some tips on um, how to raise your vibration because I feel that spirits reminding me. I'm Jules Aradia, by the way. <laughs> I always forget to introduce myself, but I'm like, oh, I just want to get the, you know, I just want to do the work. I don't, I don't, I don't care about. It's not about me, you know. So. Um, if you are drawn to this um, work and want to know more about me and my practice, please go to julesaradia.com. I'm a Reiki master and priestess here in the Los Angeles area. And um, I want to thank you for taking some time out of your day to join me here. Um, we'll be connecting to each other through the earth grid later. I'm going to show you how to tap into the earth grid and then I'm going to be um, doing some distance Reiki, uh, sending some Reiki energy, which is universal life force energy. Um, it's intelligent. It's the intelligence of the universe. Some people call this the God force or the goddess force energy. It's, it's um, also known as prana or chi or ki. Um, there's a lot of different words for it, and this energy is everywhere. And our bodies are like the containers that, that hold this essence, or this energy as it flows through us. And as we breathe, we breathe life force energy through us. And um, we've been getting pummeled pretty heavily the last couple of weeks with geomagnetic storms. Okay. Um, and it's been activating us and awakening things at a deep level within us. And it's interesting that this week, especially, I've noticed um, what I call glitches in the matrix or like these time space anomalies um, that are taking place. And I have this awareness of two realities that are existing in the same, in the same space. Um, and the only, there is no separation between the two, except there is a variance in, in frequency. Um, years ago, about seven years ago, actually, maybe even exactly right around seven years ago, I was meditating and I lost three days. I went into my temple space and I went into the zone and it was when I came out of it three days had gone by and um, so so that was my my first time space anomaly that was uh, fairly profound but as I came out of my meditative um, zone I had I had a vision or I was gifted a vision and in the vision I was shown two realities that um, 
that were existing, or actually I was shown the planet Earth that was that was splitting in two, um, and then as it opened, kind of cracked open like an egg, a butterfly emerged, and spirit told me that there was, um, that I needed to make a choice. And that this choice, I, I had to choose what I was aligning myself with. And I needed to choose, there was like paths that diverged. And one was a path of illusion, and one was a path of truth. And, well, I, I chose truth. Um, <laughs> but as, you know, bringing it forward to the now, um, this week as I'm noticing these, these realities superimposed over each other, one very much seems to be a synthetic reality that is technology driven, um, that is not founded in, in harmony with life, that is not founded, yeah, it doesn't, it's not harmonic, it's not, it doesn't harmonize with, with our life. In fact, this energy is, um, it depletes our life force energy. It is draining to our life force energy. It is confusing to our life force energy and our cells in our body. Um, and we're learning a little bit more and more about how Wi-Fi and electronic devices have an electromagnetic, fe electromagnetic field. And this electromagnetic field is not necessarily good for us. And we need to, of course, that's the, oh, I have one. And we need to uh, detox from that energy. So I highly encourage you um, at nighttime to turn off your Wi-Fi and sleep with your cell phones in another room. Because um, it'll help you get a better sleep at night. It'll help your health. It'll help your focus. I don't even want to go into too much of the weirdness that I've been uncovering this week and some people are like tell us tell us more tell us more but I really want to stay on on point and on track um, with today's session because I know your time is valuable so um, one of the stones that I work with to detox from EMF uh, electromagnetic field of and Wi-Fi and cell phone radiation and so forth is um, this is shungite um, it's a black stone, but it, it really helps you release and let go. And another stone that's great to work with is black tourmaline that will help you release energy. It'll help you, you know, help you get in your body. You know, there's, there's stones I work with more in the daytime to really help me shine and help my energy level be up and hold that up energy. Uh, and then there's stones that I work with more at night when I'm unwinding and, and, relaxing at the end of the day. So you may, you know, adjust your practice so that, you know, obviously we're not going to drink, well, some of us drink coffee at all hours of the day, but, you know, I don't drink coffee after the sun goes down because then I'm up till three in the morning. <laughs> and one of the things as I, as you raise your vibration, that is one of the side effects. In fact, let's talk about the, some of the side effects of raising your vibration because as we get hit with this seasonal shift and the geomagnetic storm that's hitting us on Sunday, I mean, everything that is in the energy, the, the biofield of, of the planet is going to be affected by this because basically there's a, there's a coronal hole in the sun and there's solar wind coming out of this of this hole and it's if I was the Sun and I was like hey earthlings it's time for you to wake up and I was like Shh, you know it's like this hot breath of the Sun that's that's headed towards the earth and it's hitting and buffering and flowing around the planet um, and it's causing not only unsettling um, the earth's field but it's 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 called a storm you know, for a reason, it's like really shaking things up. And um, so energetically, what this can do to us is it can make us feel a little bit more aggressive. Um, it can impact your sleep patterns, or it can make you feel tired, um, like extreme tiredness or too much energy. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a, a healthy balance in between um, so that we can move through these shifts with, with grace and ease is the grace and ease, you know, when we're in resistance, when we're fighting the flow of life 
and 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 we're pushing and we're kicking down walls. I mean, there's a time to do that, but you know, if we keep doing that, it's exhausting, it's draining to us. So as we um, make these micro shifts during our day with with these mindsets, they can actually be be very powerful for us overall uh, in helping support our life force and our and our and our energy. So. Um, as you are raising your frequency, you might have headaches as your crown chakra opens. As each of the chakras, you know, as we open and as we go into stillness with our meditations and breath work, and maybe you do yoga, as we open up, um, energy starts to flow through our chakras in, in more powerful ways than Previously, if you had blockages, blockages in your chakras, um, and the chakra system is the energy system that flows through the body. There are seven major chakras within the body, um, and so we'll just stick with that. And the seven major chakras are really contribute to our overall health and well-being, and we want to have them strong and healthy and functional, and not too open and not too closed. Balance, balance is key. So as as we open up and we let go of the past. Mm, we'll spend some time when, as we meditate, we'll spend some time letting go of the past because the past is over and we are new beings, we are different beings. We are, we, you know, we, truth is we've already manifested heaven on earth. It's here, it lives within our heart. We just have to ah, like let it blossom out and shine and allow that essence, that radiance to, to be shared. Um, with our friends and our loved ones and our family and how we walk through this world and the work that we do and our and our outlook and our perspective and what we contribute and how we contribute, how we carry ourselves is really important. You know, a simple smile and a compliment to a stranger can flip their whole day around. And it might mean the difference of someone taking their own life or not. We're life is that serious right now so it's it's very important for us to uh, anchor ourselves in what we want and hold that and um yeah so so as your crown chakra and your third eye opens you can have headaches so you're going to want to hydrate you're going to want to make sure you have those electrolytes um you may feel a lot of people have been having heart openings you know oh this is interesting um in some of my studies, I learned how in, in the universe is within us, and the sun makes its journey through our bodies, through through the chakras, uh, as we go through the seasons. At the summer solstice, when the sun is at its peak of power, the sun lives here at our crown. At the winter solstice, when the days are shortest, the sun lives deep within um, in our solar plexus. But at the equinox time when we have equal day and equal light, the sun lives in our heart. I thought that was kind of nice. So as, so with this equinox time, as the sun is, you know, living here in our heart, we can feel that radiance. Why don't you just take three deep breaths right now? One for the mind, one for the body, one for the soul, and connect to your heart. You know, as we go through these big shifts and changes and your heart opens, and you can open your heart by doing breath work and working on expansion and opening and connecting to love and compassion and breathing, compassionate breath. You might feel, when my heart opened, I had waves of like, whoa, you know when you're going down a roller coaster? <laughs> And you're feeling that like oh my god and you feel like like or this excitement but it's like amplified to the point where you're like am i terrified or is this excitement and you kind of <laughs> just sit with it a minute because you're having some trouble discerning but you feel this interesting fluttering sensation sometimes people feel like some aches as their heart's trying to open and there's resistance there um so so you can feel you know depending on where what chakra is opening you'll feel energies going on in those areas. So in your solar plexus, a number of people this week have reached out to me and said, okay, I'm getting waves of nausea, what's going on? <laughs> I love that people reach out to me, it's like, okay, you know what's going on with the planets 
in the sky, what's happening? <laughs> Why am I feeling these strange feelings going on in my body? Well, um, it's a bright the car at the stoplight is reflecting. Um, the solar plexus, when you're feeling nausea, it's like your solar plexus is opening and it's pushing out all those unprocessed emotions of self-doubt, maybe even self-hatred, low self-esteem stuff. You know, it's like here, when we take a lot of energy hits here to our solar plexus, especially when we put ourselves out there and someone's like, rah, 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 back to us, if that's the response that we're getting from the world around us is like, we'll feel it here. Um, energetically, you can be around some people where you feel you feel like you've just been punched in this in the stomach. Um, there was something that just shifted on my altar, and I want to make sure that the candle is still okay. It's good. Okay. Ah, so you can feel oh, as your root chakra. Let's say you have a blocked root chakra, which is connected to your elimination system. You can. Um, and when it's blocked, you can experience constipation. And then what I've noticed, because I, I was, my root chakra was totally blocked when I started on my, um, on my healing path. My upper chakras were like way open and even excessive. And my root chakra was like, oh, I don't feel safe. I don't trust these people. I don't trust the world. You know, and so it was just like, eat. and as you start to open, it can go to the other extreme and you can have, diarrhea. <laughs> so just notice and notice as you're working, you know, on balancing yourself and he, and bringing your, you know, optimizing your wellness. Um, it's all going to come back into balance. Um, Shungite is also a good stone for the root chakra. Um, if you do have headaches, another stone to work. Hello. Another stone to work with is um, amethyst, which is purple, but there's a glare on it. Okay, there we go. Amethyst. I love amethyst. It's one of my favorites. So let's talk about raising our vibration really quick. And I have so much energy right now. I'm like bouncing in the chair. I can feel all you guys. I think you're awesome. Um, so thank you for taking the time again to, to join us today. Join me, us. We're in it together, us. So uh, tips on how to raise your vibration. So let's first and foremost, for me, that was like the biggest thing was radical self-love. Radical effing self-love. If you don't love yourself, you're not going to make healthy choices. You're going to have unhealthy partnerships and unhealthy relationships. You're going to not put, have the desire to put healthy things into your body or to do healthy things. So radical self-love, um, claiming, you know, that love for yourself. For me, how do I, how do I nourish myself with love? You know, when I first learned Reiki, I realized that I didn't know how to nourish myself with love. And when I was self-administering Reiki to myself for the first time, I realized that I was actually giving love to myself for the first time. So in a, in a few minutes, we're going to be doing some Reiki together and you will be able to open and give yourself that love if you've never done Reiki before. Um, so this is one way. Um, another way to, for radical self-love is you have to hold your healthy boundaries. You know, creating healthy boundaries for yourself and your relationships, recognizing when people are taking advantage of you and maybe using you. Um, because people will take, <laughs> there's takers and there's givers. And if you're a giver, you might be giving too much. And, and it's not that you need to cut yourself off and stop love, stop, you know, being loving, but there may be certain individuals that you have to love from afar. Um, and so, so that's another way of being more loving to myself that I had to step into. And I had even had to defend those healthy boundaries you know, speaking up for yourself, standing up for your rights, not allowing people to walk all over you um, because you are worthy. 
and um, because you are worthy. Let's just full stop there. Um, Another way that I uh, practice radical self-love is protecting my health and my life force energy. I'm a highly sensitive person, and um, there may be many, many of you out there that are also highly sensitive, or uh, maybe you call yourself empathic, or you're an, you're an empath. And one of my biggest lessons had to do with understanding what my personal energy was versus the energy of the world around me and the energy that I was picking up by being around certain people. And um, I had to do some shielding. I had to do some clearing work. I had to take salt baths to clear, to clear my energy. Um, and then that helped me stay clear. And I had to recognize when people were draining me and um, and maybe where there was unhealthy attachments to certain relationships and things. Um, so that's so that's radical self love. And please, you know, feel free to to define you know define it for yourself. You know how how do you work with radical radical love? Radical. It's totally rad. I'm a child of the 80s, in case, in case you couldn't tell. Um, so the next thing that I do uh, that I suggest for raising your vibration has to do with the food that we put in our body. And I recently went, I don't want to cry. I really don't want to cry during this video. I'm not going to cry. But this leaves, this is very important to me. I, and I didn't realize how important. Because there's a lot of chemicals in the food that we eat and some of the food that we buy uh, at the stores if it's not organic you don't know if they're, they're practicing practicing ethical practices um, or sustainable farming and for, it really became important for me to align myself um, and with companies and farmers and, and that, that practiced sustainable farming and, and, did th and bought products that, that from companies that didn't harm the planet um, and didn't poison our earth or use poisons in like the GMO foods when they spray with Roundup. That sort of stuff causes cancer and other complications. When there's chemicals in our foods that we eat, the chemicals, our bodies don't recognize that as food. It's a foreign substance that's in the body. So it confuses our cells. And when our cells are confused, they don't function properly. They try to protect themselves and they swell. They inflame. This is like a huge cause of inflammation in the body. Not to mention these chemicals can have effect on your psyche, how you think, your thought patterns, and your mood, and your overall life force energy. Because if your cells are conf confused and your body's confused and you're just swelling, I mean, it, it, it caused, I know I was eating foods and some, I was trying to eat as clean as I can, could, could. Um, but I had to make certain shifts. I kept eating gluten and wheat, and I didn't realize how much brain fog gluten gave me and how, and I thought it wasn't a big deal by eating it just like twice a week, like every three days, but it was like I was repoisoning myself every three days, and then it took three days for the inflammation to go away, and then I kept repoisoning re myself again. And over time, you know, it's like the inflammation was just there and it wasn't coming off and there was the weight and, um, but the inflammation causes pain and discomfort in your body and dis-ease and illness. So a lot of, you know, when we're looking to, for total wellness in our body, inflammation, it's like, how do we, how do we clear out the inflammation? And it comes down to choosing clean, healthy foods. Um, yeah, so if you want a quick download of what what I'm not eating, I'm not eating gluten or wheat or dairy or corn or red meat or pork or chemicals or processed foods. Um, 
or soy or I can't remember anything. There's a long list of no's, but <laughs> lots of leafy greens and lots of vegetables. Um, one of the things I started noticing and it helped me shift is um, compared to what I did in the past is I didn't, it took the dietary change for me to realize and wake up that I was actually feeding negative emotions with sugar. And whenever I was upset, I'd have a piece of chocolate. And, um, and I noticed that my sweet cravings were more intense at nighttime. So when I made this massive lifestyle change, um, I couldn't medicate with food anymore. I couldn't feed my emotional addictions anymore. Um, and emotion, you know, you might be addicted to negative emotions or drama, worry or fear. And what do you do when we spend time focusing on worry or fear or lack or these negative emotions is it locks us into a lower vibration. And one of the things that I started realizing about the synthetic world that is superimposed over the, the world that is uh, in harmony with life and health and wellness and peace and love, um, the natural world versus the synthetic world, is chemicals in the food. Like everything kind of compounded on itself. And I was kind of like, it was hard for me to stay up. It was hard for me to stay positive. And it was interesting how I would go, it was like I'd be good for a while and then I'd crash. And then I'd be, and it was a lot of work to get good for a while and then I'd crash. And when I started uh, becoming very aware of, of, of the food that I was putting in my body and how like, and I started noticing at night, like certain thought patterns would, would start to come to the surface. And I started wondering, it's almost as if those certain energies or frequencies were pulsed out at night time or during the dark hours. Um, and, it, and it could have just been my body, you know, in the routine of in the nighttime, this is when you have your sweets <laughs> and this is when you have your chocolate and this is when you overeat. <laughs> I was always fine during the day. <laughs> Nighttime was the hard time, but um, I noticed that I was I was feeding into those negative emotions. I, and when if you feed, and Spirit always told me that worry is a choice. You never have to worry. That's your choice. And if you choose that, take accountability for what you're doing to yourself when you're spending time in that energy. I have really straightforward and direct guides. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Okay, you're right. You're absolutely right. I'm not going to focus on that anymore. I'm not going to spend my time focusing on worry or lack or fear. And so when I made this dietary shift, I couldn't feed those negative emotions. That's where I got sucked in and it was like if there was this interesting sugar connection. Um, so instead of feeding negativity and spending time soaking in, in negativity um, or reaching for a piece of cake, or, or cookies or something sweet when we're, when we're upset. Reach for something else that is, that is more healthy. Uh, in fact, for me, I started asking my soul what it was hungry for. And I started nourishing myself in new ways. Um, I've actually been doing this trick for a long, for a long time, and that, that's, that's helped me for, for a long time, asking my soul what it's hungry for. And most of the time, it's not food. Most of the time, it's, I want to go to the park. I want to go be in nature. I want to be around the trees. I want to be in the sunshine. I want to create with color. I want to sing. Um, so, so that's what, you know, so then when we nourish our spirit and our soul with, with those types of activities, um, we're replenishing ourselves and healing and, and bringing uh, vitality to ourselves in different ways. Another thing that helped me uh, with, with, as I was going through energy shifts is working with essential oils. Oh my goodness. I have daytime oils and I have nighttime oils. And during the daytime, I'm, okay, my favorite right now, my favorite combo literally right now is lemon and frankincense. 
and I actually posted a little video on my page today. Um, I have an oil diffuser, so I've been like going crazy with these different combinations. But Spirit was like showing me that I needed to, to bring some balance. And the essence of frankincense um, is connected to the sun. And the essence of um, lemon is connected to the moon. So as we come up on equal day, equal night, equal dark, equal light, um, you know, we've got these masculine and feminine energies that we're balancing. So I've been using those two oils in my in my diffuser to help to help bring a balance. I'm using them together. And you can put those two oils in your bath and you can do like a ritual bath or a salt bath that way. And you know, really the scent is very cleansing, um, I feel. Uh, at nighttime, after a long day and peopling, sometimes my um, nervous system would feel overtaxed and I'd feel a little bit fried, <laughs> to put it mildly. And lavender oil really helped with that. Lavender's a nervine. Um, I feel like lavender really helps prepare me for the dream time and really helps me just clear. It's just cleansing as I, as I breathe the scents, scent of it. It's just very cleansing to my body and spirit. Um, another another tool that you might want to use or look up um, on the internet, there's something called EFT, it's Emotional Freedom Technique. Um, it's also referred to as tapping. And um, sometimes tapping can, can help you release blocked, oh, blocked um, energies that are, that are stuck in your body. And um, one of the affirmations that I do when I'm noticing negative emotions come up so that I don't reach you know, for something that I might not need or might not be healthy, is um, I say, even though I feel whatever that is, even though I feel totally pissed off at this situation, <laughs> I deeply and truly accept myself. So even though I feel, I deeply and truly accept myself. I accept myself, I accept myself, I accept myself, and I love myself no matter what. So that's a good one. That one's always worked for me. Because we are not our feelings. We are not our thoughts. We are so much more. Um, a couple videos ago, is it the Aquarius full moon? Was it the one with the, the lunar eclipse, I think it was, maybe? I showed you guys how to do a water blessing and how to make holy water. Um, recently, I did a video, a couple weeks ago, I did a video that's on my website, julesaradia.com, um, that shows people how to enhance the life force energy in the food that they eat. And when you do this, I swear to God, your cooking tastes so much better. I'm a foodie. <laughs> it's like, I enjoy, I enjoy delicious, delicious treats. And, and you should, but I, but I, but as we're working to raise our vibration, if you're working, you know, to raise your vibration, you're working with your essence, you're enhancing your essence, um, which is eternal and infinite and wise and loving. That is our true nature. And when we bless the, um, the water and the food and the things that we put in our body, we awaken the essence of those plant beings or you know, of the food, the essence that's in the food uh, or the water as well. And I feel that it, it helps. It's like, you know, I bless my water. I have a huge water bottle that I drink and I bless my water and I bless myself with every sip. And actually, if you are going through energy shifts and you are feeling nauseous, keep a bottle of water near you at all times. When I was going through one of my big shifts, um, I, and I was doing a lot of yoga at the time, um, I kept getting nauseous and I would drink this, I would sip the water and it did. It wasn't even blessed back then. I wasn't even blessing the water back then. But it instantly cleared the sensation of nausea that was going through my body. Um, so, okay, moving on. 
Um, having an awareness of our thoughts is very important, being aware of your, your mind temple. Um, watching our judgments and learning the, the difference between discernment and judgment. You know, a judgment is a projection. When you're judging somebody else, you're like, it's a projection whether you utter a word or not. <laughs> Still a projection. Discernment is different because you are making a choice as to, okay, is this healthy for me or is this not healthy for me? It's from a place, you know, you're, you're, you're protecting and upholding your own life force and this is connected to radical self-love, but we don't need to judge or vilify or condemn in order to do it. It's like, oh, okay, no, it doesn't resonate with me. Moving on. Um, I mentioned earlier, don't worry is a choice. Also, don't feed the fears. So if you're, you know, if you catch yourself going into those fearful mental places, stop. And one of the things, and it's like, but I can't, I can't. It's like there's a, there's, there's an emotion. If you can't, there's an emotional addiction there, and you have to start. You have to do something to replace or banish that thought form before it can consume you and ruin your day and steal your life force. Um, so one of the things that I kind of do mentally or in the moment is um, as soon as I as soon as I recognize those things coming up, I just <clears throat> no. Do you remember Family Feud back in the day? I think Family Feud's still on TV, but I don't watch TV anymore. But um, Family Feud, they had those three red X's, and I just imagine that you know, eh, no, not gonna engage. Nope, nope. Not going to engage at all. When we engage with those negative emotions, when we engage with negative people, and we start playing that game of tit for tat, and, nee, 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 and he said, and she said, and I'm going to get that person back, and da, da, da. When we start playing that game, what are you doing? What are you doing? It, you're choosing to exist and, and operate and act from a vibration that is not aligned with where we want to go, that is not aligned with health or peace or love. One of the things that's been coming up is to remember and remind yourself love is law. Love is the law. And it's actually, it's funny because yesterday I noticed some interesting thought forms come up and, and, um, as soon as I thought, mm -mm, love is the law, it was like, pfft, they dissipated. They didn't get a hold. They couldn't penetrate. Um, when we go into that frequency of love, fear cannot exist. When we live from a loving place, fear cannot exist there. When we act from a place of love, pure love, unconditional love. That's our, you know, let's, let's, let's live there. You know, we have to live there. We have to be more loving. We have to choose love. If we don't, we're going to keep going through the same cycles of pain and suffering. And I don't know about you, but suffering has been my teacher long enough. I'm ready to move on. <laughs> suffering doesn't need to be our teacher anymore. And, and when, we, when we become more aware, we go, oh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't need to go down that path anymore. And this is how we're using discernment to get really clear on, on where we're going and what we want. Um, one of the things that's really important is to know your triggers and to work on them. What are some of the things that really piss you off? Who are the people who do it? Sit with that. Work with it. Um, meditate on it. If we can sit and be still in discomfort and just allow that energy to, to process through us and be released, there's nothing you can't do. So meditation is another way to raise your vibration. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to meditate. We can be still. 
or we can have moving meditations. So I know for me, I was prone to a lot of moving meditations and stillness was difficult for me. There was literally time. It's still, I have so much energy, it's like, whoa. I go into the stillness more at night. In the morning, in the daytime is more of the moving meditations for me, personally. That's how I have my balance. Because um, I like to go deep and I like to take my time and go slow. But um, there's something that is very beautiful about being in the rhythm of life and the rhythm of, of the universe as it dances through you. And as you're listening to your favorite music, just that music that really makes you feel up and good and empowered. And as you're moving your body, your body becomes a temple. Your body is, is, becomes life dances through your body. And that can be a sacred ritual, that can be a meditation in and of itself. Um, there's also chanting that you can do. I noticed that with me, chanting mantras, mantras really uh, protect the mindscape and help clear your mind uh, and protect your mind temple from negative energies, negative thought forms. Um, one of the Sanskrit mantras that is always my go-to is connected to Ganesha. And it, it goes, Om Gam Gana Pata Ye Namaha. And I kind of sing it. Om Gam Gana Pata Ye Namaha. Om Gam Gana Pata Ye Namaha. Om Gam Garapata Yehi Namaha hmm. <laughs> It always gets me into a zone. Um, and meditating with crystals is another thing that I love doing. Love it, love it, love it. So, crystals. Um, that can help bring you up and that can help bring you down. If we're raising our vibrations, we're talking about moving on up. One of my favorite crystals for moving on up is uh, blue kyanite. You can see it here. Isn't this impressive? I got this at Shasta. Love it. <laughs> um, yes, this is this. Blue kyanite connects you to your higher self. Blue knot, kyanite helps create a bridge. If you have a block, an energy block in a certain area, this will help create a bridge so that energy can flow where it needs to go. Um, yes, this blue kyanite doesn't ever need to be cleansed. It doesn't retain energy. Blue kyanite can actually be used to clear and cleanse other stones. So that's a good one. The, the purple amethyst that I showed you before is another one. If you happen to be one of those types that is struggles with depression, um, and I know this world can be confounding and can and be oppressive at times and make us feel really down, I would highly recommend, especially as we're moving into the dark time of year, to work with citrine. Citrine is uh, helps your body hold more light. It's connected to the solar plexus chakra. Um, so I would, I would definitely recommend that if you are feeling sluggish or slow, low energy. This is a really good, you know, um, personal development stone for making you feel stronger within yourself. Uh, da -da -da -da. Those are those are some of the crystals that I work with. Um, a very important thing that I think we need to address, and then we'll get into the to the Reiki, is has to do with forgiveness. Forgiveness is the single most healing act that we can do for ourselves. And as we cross this threshold tomorrow, and the sun moves into Libra. And we move into the fall season. 
here in the Northern Hemisphere. We need to let go of the past. And if we are holding on to grudges, we're going to keep holding that negative energetic core between us and that other person and that will just keep cycling maybe for lifetimes if you are drawn to working with magic and energy I don't know about you but I know that I've done magic in many lifetimes and I wasn't always nice and so I had to clean up a lot of my karma and what I've noticed in this lifetime is that a lot of people relationships come around and it's like hey you seem really familiar I must know you from some uh, from from somewhere there's a resonance there there's like a soul recognition that you have with the other individual well there can also be old karma that's connected to this relationship from before they may have wronged you you may have wronged them you may have killed them you may have cursed them <laughs> I had one uh, relationship where I realized, oh, I chopped off her head. I chopped off her head with a sword in another lifetime. And this is the karma that's coming around for that. I get it. I get it now. And I had to sit and sit with forgiveness. And if you're learning lessons on forgiveness, boy, oh, boy, it's not easy. And my heart goes out to you. And maybe we can all, you know, as we're, as we're sharing in Reiki, uh, we can all hold space for each other as we go through these shifts. We want to um, we want to get to a point when we forgive someone. It's like we're we're clearing that away that old karma uh, from ourselves, so that we're releasing ourselves from the pain of the incident, and then we can really move on with our lives. Um, there's a there's a there's a prayer that I'd like to share with you called the Ho'oponopono. And actually, in the description of of this video, I provided a link. Um, it's um, to a musical a music download. I took the prayer and I turned it into a song so that people could work with it. Usually, if I'm working with some type of energy, it eventually turns into a song because everything turns into a song with me. Um, so, the Ho'oponopono is very powerful in its ability to help us heal our relationships, our relationships to each other as humans, and our relationships, to, our relationship to this planet and to life. And it's four lines, and it's very simple. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. So from here, let's take three deep breaths and let's, let's be aware of the Ho'oponopono and our relationships. A relationship to the past. Remember, the past is over. Summer is over. The last season, over. We are stepping into new territory. We are conscious. We are aware. We are aligned. We are choosing right now to be in the now moment. Let's take three deep breaths, one for the mind, one for the body, one for the soul. and give me permission to send you Reiki right now.
As you breathe deep and slow, feel that expansion as you inhale. Feel the spaciousness expanding within you. As you inhale, give yourself permission to open. like a rose blossoms to the light of the sun. Be aware of the sky above you and the earth below you and you in between. Center yourself in the now moment Detach from the past. Unplug from the past. Detach from the future. Unplug from the future. And just simply be here now. Now is the gift, the present, the present moment, the infinite now moment that is constantly arriving. Open to the now. Mm. And feel yourself coming into a deeper balance. Feel yourself going deeper within yourself with every breath. Feel yourself releasing tension from your body. As you exhale, allow tension to leave your muscles. And as you breathe, you may feel guided to stretch. You may even feel guided to do a little yoga. As you exhale, go deeper. Spiral deeper down, 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 down. Take another deep breath and go deeper still. Go deep beneath the surface of your being. Go deep beneath the surface of the Earth's crust. Feel your consciousness flowing down to the deep places beneath the soil. I was doing this the other day and I sent my energy down and I felt it pull off to the right and I realized there was a stream. There was like, there it was the ley line I was on and I felt the flow of energy going that way and I just, see if you can feel that stream. See if you can feel the hidden waterways deep down below. Let your energy go down deep past the rocks, past the surface world, past the roots, go deep down. Feel your way down to the heart of the planet. And plug into that. And draw up energy from Gaia like a fountain of youth. Draw this energy up through you and as you breathe it up, 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 up. Feel it flowing up your spine, up, up, up to the top of your head, at the top of the breath. As you exhale, shoot this energy up out the top of your head. Spray it like a fountain of light that shoots up and then flows back down. Very good. As you Breathe, go deep down again. And I want you to feel, feel beneath the surface, 
there's a there's a grid there's like a web of life the ley lines the snake lines the dragon lines the energy that flows beneath and below the web plug into that feel it there's a web that, there's a line that goes from california to new york to london and all around the globe flows north and south east and west there's like this lattice work let's plug into that earth grid let's link up and sync up together not as individuated but as part of our earth walk together as children of Gaia mm -hmm. Mm. And Spirit's telling me to remind you again of the Ho'oponopono. Let's all say this together. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And as you breathe deep and slow, breathe compassionate breaths. Breathe loving breaths. As you exhale, expand and reach across time and space and gift the blessing of forgiveness to those who have wronged you, to those who have crossed you. You don't need to bear those burdens anymore. Those burdens will keep you stuck. You take a deep breath. And we release and let go. We release and let go. We release and let go. Mm. past is over. thanks to yourself feel gratitude for yourself for taking the time to connect today thank yourself for helping hold energy and hold space not only for yourself but for all of us we're in this together Getting very, 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 very warm, and my right armpit is totally sweating. <laughs> so that means the energy is flowing very strong, and I keep being shown 
I keep being shown grandmothers it's lining up behind, like, but especially grandmothers. There's grandfathers there too, but I'm especially seeing grandmothers. The feminine is very strong. We are moving into the feminine time of year, and the feminine is going to be speaking to us as a guide. So spirit is saying, pay attention, pay attention to your dreams because, because the grandmothers want to speak to you. The grandmothers have a message for you. It's beautiful. I have a sense that some of you are going through some loss right now. That's what I'm feeling. So I'm sending you extra love. And as you breathe, as you expand, and as you contract, feel yourself coming into a harmonic balance with life with your life force that is within your body, with the system of life that is connected to this planet. Hmm. Yeah, the ancestors are very strong. There's one grandmother that's like, tell them about the maiden child. Tell them about the magical child within them. Tell them about that magical, pure hope, untainted, that essence that is within them. Remind them that this is the Christos consciousness. This is the second coming. It is arriving through all of us. Give yourself permission to receive the blessings. Take a deep breath and open wider. Mm. The ancestors are reminding me Khalil Gibran wrote a book called The Prophet and one of the sections in there he wrote about joy and sorrow and he talked about the pain of sorrow being like knives that carve out the cup or the chalice but I keep getting shown a canoe that is carved out of a single tree trunk and it's similar that this, you know, the pain that we're experiencing, the suffering, the sorrow that we've experienced, they've all, that's hollowing us out. The difficulties that we've gone through have all hollowed us um, so that we can be vessels, so that we can be containers for um, something for our spirit, stronger containers for our spirit. But also, if you think about what a canoe is, it keeps showing me a canoe that's carved out of an evergreen tree. And um, the canoe stays afloat. And as we move into you know, the rainy season and there's going to be hur more hurricanes and floods, probably, um, and more drama and other people's stuff and the world is in chaos around us, we have to figure out a way to stay afloat. This vessel that keeps us afloat can also be a container for our joy and our life force and our love. So I want you to feel that joy, that love, and the container that you are for your infinite, eternal, wise, and loving spirit. And all the pain and suffering that we have endured, 
all the hardships that we have gone through that have made us strong. We bless those experiences. We forgive the ones that wronged us and we let go of what we do not need so that we can be the container and so that we can stay afloat and not have anything that's too heavy that's going to make us sink. being shown this sea, this vast sea of consciousness. And we're setting sail. And the sun is rising in the distance. And we're sailing towards a new dawn. And the seas are calm and peaceful. And the dawn is a golden sphere that is rising, that is the sun, that right now lives in our hearts on the equinox. And as you breathe, allow yourself to feel the wholeness Yourself as a holism, yourself as a fractal of the universe, because Reiki is universal consciousness. It is that intelligence of life, and it is omnipresent. We just have to be able to hold it and open to it. And as we open to our Reiki selves, we transcend the limitations of our bodies, of this particleized world. Can you feel heaven that is inside of you? Can you feel it in your heart? Expand that sense. Expand it beyond your body. Let that essence fill the space that surrounds you. Feel the support of your ancestors that are with you now, that have been helping you every step of the way. Feel your angels and your spirit guides that love you and support you and uphold you. I see them standing. We're all like, there's this circle of beings and we're all like part of the circle, but we're in the circle. We're, and these beings are, are, are around us like, like a circle of standing stones that are eternal and lasting and dependable. Mm. Listen, they're telling me, listen and pay attention because they're giving you signs. Pay attention to your dreams, especially as we pass this full moon. Pay attention to signs when you're out and about. Are there birds that suddenly appear? Are there butterflies or animals that come up strangely, come up to greet you? Notice the patterns. Are there a lot of hummingbirds that are all of a sudden starting to show up in your life? 
Spirit is always talking to us. Nature is always speaking to us. When you step outside, greet nature. Say hello, beautiful. Hello, beauty. That's all you're gonna, and then see what happens. Hello, sacred ones. And see how the breeze shifts. Or a butterfly suddenly passes by. Or a bird suddenly starts to sing. You are loved. You are here for a reason. Hmm. And spirit says that we're, we've always been perfect. We are perfect. We just forget our perfection. And now in this moment, you are in perfection. Perfectly aligned in mind, body, and soul, the whole of life. Take three deep breaths to integrate everything that has come through during this session. We thank Reiki, our guides, and all the beings of light that helped us during this healing session. Stay if you will. Go if you must. Hail and farewell and blessed be. May you carry this energy with you wherever you walk. As we move through these powerful shifts, For more information on my work, please go to JulesAradia.com and have a beautiful day. Mm.